So now we're going to talk about precession. And this is this effect, if you've ever had a top, where you, you pull it and it, it goes really quickly, but then it doesn't, it doesn't spin straight up like you kind of think it should do. It kind of does this wobble thing where it rotates like this. And you can relate how fast it rotates, how fast it, it wobbles about that axis with um, the properties of the top. And this is how we do it. So first we're going to draw some axes here. We're going to have a fixed capital Z axis, and we're going to have some fixed capital X and some fixed Y axes. And then we're going to imagine our top, and it's actually going to be rotating maybe um, kind of kind of at some angle here. So here's our Here's our top, and it rotates about this axis, which we're going to call lowercase z. And um, because this has, uh, this axis is rotated some angle theta here from the original fixed z, then we also have to rotate our y axis. So our y axis is going to be y over here, and then our x-axis is kind of going to be out of the board, um, but I'm going to just kind of draw it in here so that we have something to measure from. Um, and so then the, the rotation of the rotor here, this is our little rotating top, it's kind of tall and narrow, so it's, it stays out of the way. Uh, that's going to be in this direction here. It's going to be in the z direction, so we'll draw our pink here. And then this angle that this x is away from the fixed x, that's going to be moving around, um, and we're going to describe that angle that it just, that just says like where this is relative to the fixed axis by some angle psi. All right, so now when we think about these axes, I already said x, y, z in, in the pink is fixed, and but, but in the black we have our, our x, y, z rotates with theta, or um, let me actually give myself a little more, Let's see if we can fit this all in one board, x, y, z rotates with big omega, and that is going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to this theta dot, and if, if this was changing, that would be in the, in the x direction. And it also rotates here, and this is this is what's going to be changing all the time. is is going to be this psi dot. But now this psi dot, if we if we follow what this angle is relative to this, it's going to be in the in the fixed z direction. So that would be capital K hat. So in order to really get this, what we need to do is we need to find what what. We need to break k hat into the lowercase coordinate system so that we have everything in the same coordinate system. So if we do that, we can say big k hat is going to be equal to, and now we can see that, um, that it's going to be positive in the, in the y direction and positive in the z direction. So let's start with the y, so that it's going to be sine of theta in the j direction, plus we've got our positive component in the z direction, which is going to have a cosine term. Okay, so now we can relate this um, this big omega, and this is going to be how our coordinate system is going to be rotating. And, and this term here, for steady precession, when it's kind of doing this traveling behavior, this actually is not going to change. So for steady precession, theta dot is going to be equal to zero, and actually, um, any of those like alpha terms where where we're thinking about how our angular momentum, our angular velocity, is changing in the lowercase x, y, z frame, 
that's also going to be zero because that we're not we're not going to let it like spin faster or process faster. We're going to say what happens if all of that is kind of a steady state behavior, which you which you will see if you have a top and you rotate it. Um, all right. So what do we need now? Now all we need to do our sum of our moments is going to be this big omega crossed with the I matrix times the omega vector, because we've already determined that this one is zero. Um, and this one, we've already talked about this, but for, for gyroscopes, this is a diagonal matrix. Um, and specifically, it's a special kind of diagonal matrix where the Ixx and the Iyy term are equal to zero, but not necessarily equal to the Izz term. And now this omega is just going to be equal to this plus this spin here. So we're, we're not putting the spin in this axis, and that's okay because it's symmetric in that axis. We're putting it, but we are putting it here. So that gives us zero in the x direction, and that gives us side dot sine theta, and we've got a side dot cosine theta. We're going to take the cross product of that with now zero in the x direction, i, y, y, psi dot, sine theta, and now we have i, z, z, psi dot, cosine theta, um, and then we also have ourselves a little more room here, i, z, z, times our spin rate. And that's going to be equal to the sum of the moments. Now, when we take this cross product, we're only going to get things in the i direction. And the specific case of steady state precession that is most common is when the, the sum of the moments is equal to zero. So I'm going to erase this and put the, the, the solution of this cross product up here. So we're going to set the sum of the moments equal to zero. This is a more common case. And then when we take this product, we get our psi dot sine theta. Z, psi dot, cosine theta, plus I, Z, Z, P. And now when we take this cross product, it's going to be negative. So um, all of this is part of the same equation, but we've got our psi dot, cosine theta, I, Y, Y. Psi dot sine theta. And the sum of all of this is equal to zero, so I'm just going to set these two equal to each other. So now, if you look at this equation, um, some things actually cancel out, which is handy for us. So you get rid of this, you get rid of this, and you can get rid of this. Get rid of this. So now we can start because what we really want is the relationship between psi dot, which is the rate of it of it revolving around this z axis, and p, our spin, our our spin speed, and all of the parameters. So let's let's try to solve now for psi dot. All right. So we got our i z z. Let's start with like make this positive. So we've got our psi dot. And we're gonna have cosine theta. And now this term is gonna be positive. I y y. And then we're gonna be subtracting this term i z z. And that is gonna be equal to this term. I z z 
times our spin rate. So now if we solve this, we're going to have Z P over I Y over I C Z times the cosine of theta. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Now you have this formula, but it's also on your formula sheet, so you don't have to be redriving this all the time. It's going to relate, like, the more spin you get, the faster it's going to process. But also, um, the bigger this difference is, the faster this is going to process. So this means that actually this difference is quite important um, when we're thinking about how precession works. So there's some special cases. Um, and so if i y y is greater than i z z this is called direct precision um and so this is going to be kind of the case that i've drawn here with this like long skinny guy uh because this is going to be it's going to be small since all the mass is close to this z axis um, and in that case, you you get this kind of uh, behavior where the body cone kind of rolls on the outside of the space cone. And so we can also say that if I Z Z is greater than I Y Y, then um, this is called retrograde. where this is going to be the case if you have kind of a, a short, fat top. Um, like, not how I've drawn here, like maybe if it was like... Something like this, where it's rotating like that. And now it's, it's not very big. All right, and then of course, if these two are equal, then uh, you can't really have procession. It's like if you had a sphere or something, like it wouldn't have the same behavior.